All righty. All guests on 95.7 The Game appear on the River Islands guest line. Isn't it time for you to discover the islands? River Islands in Lathrop. Joining us right now, NFL Network reporter and NFL.com senior writer, Jeff Chidea. Jeff, how you doing, buddy? How are you? I'm doing well. How you guys doing? All we're, right. uh, we're doing well out here in the Bay. And, you know, we've been talking about the Chiefs, Niners, and must win, not must win. How important is it? When you see a game like this, I know it's a Super Bowl rematch. How important of a game do you think it is for both teams? Well, for the Chiefs, I think it's important given what they're going through. Well, a lot of injuries on the offense, um, a lot of playmakers down, but it certainly feels like it's a much bigger game for San Francisco. I've had a lot of interview requests in the Bay Area about this game, so it tells me it must be a big topic of, of discussion out there. And look, they have opened strong, and they haven't beat the Chiefs. God, in a long time, so it's a big game for the Niners. Jeff, let me ask you this. Through six games, what have you seen from the Niners? Are there any concerns? I know there's no McCaffrey, but you know, every time we do radio here, we, we take calls and, hey, okay, they're injured. It'll get fixed when these, <laughs> this guy comes back. What have you seen, and how do you feel about this team? Well, the way they started out was, was obviously was a little bit disappointing. You don't have that, you know, Christian McCaffrey's out. Um, I think some of the stuff in the off season with the contract situation with Ayuk and um, Trent Williams was a big, big problem. And I also think that the the, the Pearsall shooting was, was deflating. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think you've got um, a lot of things that can affect a team that's trying to win a championship. And when you go through the, the, you know, the whole situation of trying to win last year and not winning, that affects you too. So I think it looked like they were going through a little bit of a, of withdrawal, a little bit of a hangover. And that's not surprising, but they have talent. They've got great coaching. And, and I always been all that. Jeff Judea joining us on 95, seven, the game. He works for NFL network and NFL.com. Let me ask you about uh, quarterbacks in general, but obviously I'm thinking about Purdy in the back of my mind and it's, for just somebody like you who's watched a lot of football, when does a quarterback go from kind of, uh, can he do it? Is there going to be another <laughs> shoe to drop to, you know what? This guy's a good quarterback, plain and simple. Well, I think he's already gotten past that. And usually, and once the quarterback's played a couple seasons at a high level, I feel like it's pretty hard for them to go downhill unless you're talking about a situation like Deshaun Watson where you get suspended and you're not playing for a long period of time and you're changing your offensive system. Brock Purdy fits very well in with what the 49ers want to do offensively. Kyle Shanahan, for my money, is the best play caller in the business, so he knows what makes him comfortable. He's got a great supporting cast around him. You know, it's living in Kansas City, I always try to remind people Let's not have revisionist history about when Patrick Mahomes showed up. He didn't play his first year. <laughs> he joined a team that had a future Hall of Fame tight end, a future Hall of Fame wide receiver, a running back who led the league in rushing, and a pretty good offensive line. I mean, he, when you get dropped into good situations with good coaches, that means you have a pretty good chance for success. So I, I like who Brock Purdy is, and I get tired of all the people talking about what he isn't. No, oh, good stuff, Jeff. Let me ask you this. My partner and I years ago got into a 15-round bout over Andy Reid. At the time, Jeff, <laughs> he, he was in Philly, and he, he got close. He hadn't got it done, and now he's got three rings, been to four Super Bowls um, with the uh, Chiefs. But Kyle Shanahan's gotten close. Jeff, I've called him a genius, but people out here are – Antsy. They're like, when's he going to get it done? Can you share with us your thoughts on Kyle? And I don't want to say blunders, but maybe the mistakes that prevented his team from getting it uh, done. Well, it doesn't help when you're running into, again, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. And you're right, people do tend to forget what Andy Reid was like in Philadelphia and all the misses before Patrick Mahomes showed up. I don't think Kyle Shanahan needs to have a Patrick Mahomes to, to win championships. Doesn't hurt. But, you know, I think sometimes it, it does come down to little things. And when you look at, look, there's a lot of coaches in this league. Bill Cowher comes to mind who had a hard time getting over the hump and eventually did. Um, you look at players. Peyton Manning waited eight years to win a championship. And people remember him now as a great player. But there are a lot of frustrations and conversations about what kind of player he was and how disappointing he was in that realm. So, no, I think Kyle Shanahan is one of those coaches who's going to end up winning a championship at some point because he's, he's come too close with, be honest with him, he hasn't had the greatest quarterback ever. Yeah. 
Jeff Judea joining us on 95.7 The Game, works for the NFL Network as a reporter, also a senior writer at NFL.com. Uh, Jeff, you think the 49ers can get to the Super Bowl, run, this, run the table in the NFC without Christian McCaffrey? It'll be hard, but... You know, you look around the NFC, I, I feel like the, that injury that Aiden Hutchinson took in Detroit was was a big blow mm. to them. I mean, that's like losing Nick Bosa uh, or Chris Jones. I mean, that's how much he meant to that, that, that not that, that defense, but that team success. And so without him there, you know, I like think Minnesota with Sam Darnold there, you can question if he can sustain that in the playoffs. I just don't see where anybody else is going to run away with it. So, yeah, I feel like if even if McCaffrey's not there, you saw what Jordan Mason could do um, in his stead. He's done pretty well. Um, and you know that they've got that experience. That, that, that experience in big games means so much. It's what's carried the Kansas City Chiefs for a long time. And I always try to remind people this team is, and I know there's frustration out there, the Niners have been in two Super Bowls in, what, four NFC Championship games in the last yep. five years? Yep. That's a pretty good run. <laughs> yep. Hey, Jeff, uh, I want to talk to you. You mentioned Bosa, and he's coming off his best game against Seattle last Thursday night with 14 pressures. Uh, he signed a big contract, and, you know, I know he can't do it by himself, but people out here are like, you know what? He needs to be more disruptive. Can you walk us through your thoughts on, on Nick Bosa and what you see from him, you know, Sunday to Sunday? Well, he, he's doing his part. I know that much. And look, you know, a few years ago when he came in, that defensive line was really was really the heartbeat of the team. They had a ton of ton of great players on it. Some of those guys have left, and it's hard when you lose that much talent around you to continue um, being the guy and not have more people double teaming you or creating chips and doing things to disrupt you. And so I know they've been banged up defensively, but he's done a great job of of continuing to produce. I mean, I look at what he was last year in the Super Bowl where he had 12 pressures, and that's a ridiculous number for any player uh, on a defensive line. And I fully expect this game to come down to him because the Chiefs have a lot of issues at left tackle and the right tackle, Jawan Taylor, is a heavily penalized player. I know in that town there's a lot of talk about holding penalties not being called yep. in the Super Bowl. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I imagine that, that that will be a big emphasis for the Chiefs and the Niners in this game. Jeff, what do you think's going on with uh, Brandon Ayuk? Obviously, he didn't have training camp. He was holding in. He ended up getting big money uh, among the top, I don't know, five, eight uh, highest paid wide receivers, but he's off to a, a really slow start. I mean, do you view him as a receiver that is in the class of a, of a Chase, of a, of a Jefferson, of, of guys like that, or is he a notch or two below? Oh, he's a notch below. I mean, but that's a pretty high high class to be in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a pretty pretty good neighborhood when you're talking about Justin Jefferson. I put CD Lamb in there, guys who whether they're getting you know single or double covered, or whatever um, bracketed, they're going to produce big numbers. I feel like with Brandon Ayuk, I'm not surprised because one, he did miss a lot of time, and two, so much of his game is reliant on on route running and timing and and all those things that make him a great receiver. He's He's not the athlete that Tyreek Hill or a Jamar Chase is where you throw him the football on a one yard play and they go 70 with it. Like mm. that's, so I think that's a big part of it. I think he's, for the way he plays, he needs more time and more rhythm and get into a groove in the offense as opposed to someone who like, like those guys, even CD Lamb, who can just go out there and just get it done just off talent. Jeff, last thing about Kyle for me, you know, last night, and I'm excited about this game, NFL Network's re-showing the Super Bowl, and the overtime decision from Kyle to take the ball and the reaction from Mahomes and the Chief in that sideline, when in totality, do you, was that a big blunder? Was that something that, you know what, the game went in overtime? How did you process that, and how big of a deal was that or a mistake? Well, I, I look at it. I know out here they say the Niners didn't know the rules and Kyle Shanahan was clueless about that stuff. You know, when he explained it, I understood what he was thinking. One, they had a, they did a pretty good job of controlling Mahomes for most of that game. And so I think their thinking was, hey, we can get a stop here. We can get the ball and we can be the ones who, uh, excuse me, we can score and put the pressure on them and then see what they do. Mm. Now, it didn't quite work out that way. And people tend to forget that, they had a touchdown pass that was about to happen until Chris Jones got up in Brock Purdy's grill. <laughs> and if that touchdown pass gets thrown, it's a whole different conversation. So I, I don't think 
it, to me, it's like pass interference calls at the end of games. Like usually there's a lot more time to do, to, to see what happens. And end of the day, the Niners had the chiefs in a fourth and two situation yeah. and Patrick Mahomes scooted around Nick Bosa and got a first down. Yeah. <laughs> if that doesn't happen, we're not having this conversation. Yeah. Hey Jeff, thank you so Good much stuff. for joining us and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Yes, Thank sir. You. Jeff Judea, NFL Network reporter, NFL.com senior writer, joining us courtesy of the River Islands guest line.